good morning, everybody. Welcome to, back to 4D Farms. Um, I'm going to do a second half to a video that I did previously. And the reason why I didn't do this or mention all this or talk about this in the first video is because I didn't want to confuse anybody. Reason being, we live here in the South. This is mid-July, okay? And we're still harvesting things. This is my flower. I'm just going to give you a little garden tour right quick. We're in the heat of the summer now. We're getting into heat indexes. Y'all, it's 10 o'clock in the morning. I'm already drenched in sweat. It's sticky out here. You can't be out here for 10 minutes or for one minute. As soon as you walk out that door, you're breathing in the heat and you feel the stickiness in the air. So, yes, we're getting into the heat of summer. That's one reason why I wanted to wait and show y'all this second half of this video. I'll get to that in a second. This is my pretty flower still going strong. As soon as some of these die out, like probably, let's see, this one's fixing to die out. No, it's fixing to bloom. Uh, let me find one that's, that's going to be dying out. Uh, no, that one's blooming. Um, they're not fixing to die out yet to produce another one. Yeah, that one's beginning to fizzle out. I'm going to save a bunch of seeds off of these and plant for next year. This is the first time I have incorporated flowers, wildflowers, into my garden. And only half of my row survived. The other half didn't make it. I think what might have happened is I'm washing down a hill right here. And probably when it rained so hard, some of my seeds may have been, got washed down this away. And that may be why these are looking so full and lush. And some of the seeds might have got washed down to here. Look at this pretty little butterfly, y'all. Oh, he flew away. Look at this big seed, y'all. Y'all, that's as big as my hand. Okay, enough about that. I love my flowers. I just love flowers. I think I may cut some of these off today. And take them in the house. Get off there, June beetles. We're still dealing with them, but not as bad. Because let me tell y'all what my husband found. He found neem oil. Yes, neem oil takes care of June beetles. Now, I did spray some out here in my garden. And it's helped a bunch because when we sprayed up there, we got rid of them on my rose bushes. We noticed they come down here and started getting in my garden. I said, oh, no, you don't. So we started spraying neem oil down here. Okay, I'm turn this on. I don't see me now. Don't get scared. It's just me. One of these days, I won't be in my garden sweating and working for y'all to see me. Okay. Sorry. Um, anyway, they started coming down here to the garden. So, oh, oh, hey, little birdie. Hey, little bird. Whoa, it just landed on that tea post right in front of me. <laughs> okay, anyway, I'm sorry. I, I get, I'm, I'm a squirrel, y'all. My mind is, is whew, like a, my husband says, I have squirrel moments. I'm, or a hamster in that little wheel inside its cage is constantly turning. That's how my mind works. I'm an overthinker. Where was I? Okay, June beetles. <laughs> We, we come out here and we sprayed neem oil for June beetles. And we haven't had a lot of problems. But we're keeping an eye on the June beetles because once they start, we're going to uh, catch them when they start going into the ground to start laying their eggs. Then that's when we're going to get the granules that brings the grubs up from the ground. And it'll look like, a, what's that movie? Tremors? An old 80s movie? Where those things, uh, it's got, uh, what's his name, um, Kevin Bacon in it. And those things come up out of the ground, those worm-like things. Yeah, okay, they're not that huge, but it'll gross you out like that. Okay, and then that's good at eating for the, for the birds, too. They'll come down and swoop them things up, honey. Anyway, we sprayed out here for June beetles. Y'all, I'm so proud of this squash and zucchini. I got any back around just to get off of me. Look at this squash and zucchini. I am so proud. We're having to check these things every single day. Day. These things grow overnight like okra does. So we're having to check them every single day. My peppers are doing good right there. Now one variety I've got doing better than the others, okay? So, hmm, uh, some of them are turning better. And the, the, the ones that we grow year after year after year, which is Marconi, they're doing better than anything. Um, the other ones, a new 
a new variety we're growing this year. Some of them are kind of rottening on the vine before they even and fall off. I, I don't understand that. We might not grow that variety again. The cabbage is all gone. We've harvested everything. We got out here before the heat got heat index got high. We harvested everything. I see one little one still left. I'm gonna grab that one this morning. Um, hey little birdie. Did you see that one land on that cabbage right there? I caught that. Um, I see that one little head of cabbage. I'm just going to go ahead and get it because i got to put up some more sauerkraut. All the cabbage went for sauerkraut that was left, and I've made a few fresh coleslaws with it uh, for picnics and stuff that we've been having when we go swimming. So this is my squash and zucchini. Y'all, i got to show y'all this. My daughter-in-law is so excited. I'll get to my second half of my video in just a second, y'all, because it's all concerning. Ow, this squash and zucchini will scrape the far out of you. Where is it? Where is it? Where is it? I found it yesterday. My daughter-in-law is so excited, y'all. She planted the watermelon. Look at here. She's so excited. She's got a little watermelon. My grandbabies and my daughter-in-law's first watermelon. She is so excited. Now, this is her vine, her surviving plant. We're going to have more watermelons. I'm going to have to show her. But, y'all, my, my squash and zucchini is just coming right along. Look down in there. Okay, now, this is where I'm going to get into the second half of my growing tomatoes video and the reason why i'm making a second half let me get back to what i was sharing with y'all okay i'm not going to get too far away from my tomatoes because i want to show you something on these tomatoes <clears throat> you remember in my oh y'all i'm out of breath this heat is just <sighs> y'all remember in my first video when i stressed let me turn y'all back around showing you my garden in just a minute okay y'all remember in my first video when we planted these things even my second video when i gave y'all a tour and told y'all what i was doing with my tomatoes i may have done a third one i y'all I'm, I'm having trouble keeping up Woo. gosh y'all it's hot i'm having trouble keeping up <laughs> i just got fuzz in my mouth um squirrel moment where was i tomatoes okay I stress, I don't want y'all to think I'm, I'm going back now and contradictory, contradicting, or y'all think I'm crazy. That's not what she said in her first video. It's not what I said in my first video. I'm just going to tell you that right now. The reason why I didn't stress this in my first video, Growing Tomatoes, is because some people are not going to be able to do this. Your region may be different. Your growing season may be different. Here in the south, oh my gosh, y'all, we're still having hot weather, and it'll start cooling off somewhat just down to the 70s and 80s in November. Y'all, we don't get to have a, an early uh, fall season. when our hunt, It's hard for us to get our groove on hunting when fall season opens up and, and everybody's doing their hunting. We're trying to sit in our blinds or in our tree stands, and we've got sweat running down cracks we didn't know we had, y'all. It's hard to hunt when you're sitting there sweating. And, and oh my gosh, our, our falls do not start cooling off till around November. So, y'all, we can extend our growing season here in our region by doing a few simple things. Everybody's not going to be able to do this. That's why I didn't include it in the first video. But for those that live in a region where you can get some extended season and you might get a second harvesting off of some things because it's growing more foliage, like I'm fixing to show you, I'm not contradicting myself and I don't want you to think I'm crazy, but I'm probably going to have a second harvesting all the way up to our first frost on my tomatoes. And let me show you why. I did these tomatoes yesterday. Right now, during the heat of the summer, y'all, like I told you, I got a hold of these yesterday on this row. I pruned all the dead stuff off, okay? All the dead stuff is gone. This is the ones I got to hit today. Y'all, look how scraggly these things are looking. Everything's dying. You think your plant's dying? Y'all, please keep in mind, this is the south. This is not in cooler, cooler climates cooler zones y'all just bear with me here we're in the heat of the summer two things have happened to tomato plants like let's just look at this this little one right here y'all 
it's it's struggling, but look how good it's doing. This one is struggling, but y'all, let me tell you something. <clears throat> we're in the heat of the summer. We're in heat indexes like in the hundreds. I think the other day, the heat index was 107. Okay, these plants have produced all of their energy into giving me this first crop, the first harvesting, okay? Number two, since we are into the heat of the summer, heat index, your plants are gonna start looking scraggly, okay? This is normal for our region. So don't think that my plants are just dying. This is just what happens in the South. They've put all their energy. Y'all look at how tall some of my plants got. I am, I am short. I'm five foot something. Y'all, this plant right here, let me show you. See this plant? I'm having to look up at this plant. It's taller than my head. So see? And look at this. It's got new growth. I'm getting new blooms. Look. Y'all, the sun's in my eyes again. Now, I'm going to stress something to y'all, and I'm going to tell you what I'm going to do to extend my growing season. Because... I can. I'm in the south. I can do this. So, yesterday, I got out here. Two, let me back up. Two things happens here to our plants. They've, they've spent all their energy giving me this first crop. They're looking kind of scraggly, okay? We're in the heat of the summer. We haven't had much rain. We had to set up a sprinkler system last night. Where'd it go? Where'd my sprinkler go? It's right in the middle of my, right down there by my sweet potatoes, my garden hose. It's right there. We had to set up a sprinkler system last night because we're not getting a lot of rain right now in the heat of the summer. So now it's time to start, you know, paying that water bill and, and keeping our things alive. I don't get out here and work like a dog for things to die, y'all. Gardening is not for the weak. You have to maintain. You have to keep your garden going. You have to keep it up until you gather that last fruit, that last vegetable, that light, you dig up your last root vegetables, you pick your last tomato, you pick your last. Y'all, my squash and zucchini is going to be uh, going till our first frost, till November, okay? If they don't spin out before then. Um, the sweet potatoes are going to be ready come fall. We'll dig those up. They're doing very great. Okay, let me get back to my tomatoes. Let me tell you how I'm going to extend my season my season okay because of where i live let me stress you may not be able to do this that's the reason why i didn't tell y'all at the very beginning okay in my last video i know i'm repeating myself and i'm sorry this is what i'm doing okay and it works for me if you want to try this in your area i would suggest maybe sacrificing three or four of your plants for an experiment just try it. See if it'll work for you. I'm going to show you what I did. Like I said, yesterday, I got a hold of these plants. I pruned a lot. Uh, it looks like I, I missed some things. No, nope, that's just what I cut off. It just didn't come off. Let me get this one off. Well, I'll, get, I'll have to get my pruners and get that off. Okay, this is what I did yesterday, and I'm going to show you a good example. I pruned all of my plants yesterday on this side, and I got all the dead stuff off, okay? It looks like I missed some. I missed one there. I'm not going to pull on it because I don't want to damage my plant. Let me start. Let me go up here and get my pruners. All my work equipment is up here, and y'all, I'm a little muddy out here because we did put up a sprinkler system last night, and it's a little wet out in my garden. See all these tomatoes? Y'all, they spent the first growing season giving me this first harvest. But I'm fixing to make my next season. I'm fixing to make my next harvest. Good, just like this one. Okay. Let me show y'all what I'm talking about. Okay, here's one right here that it looks like I missed. Okay, I pruned all the dead stuff off yesterday. But it looks like I missed some. So I'm going to get that dead off. And I'm going to get that dead off. Now, oh, there's a rotten one. I need to get that off. So it doesn't damage the rest of my, or doesn't rot the rest of my tomato plants. Now, here is the big thing that y'all are, I'm hot, y'all, I'm losing my breath. Whew. People who have shortness of breath don't really need to be out here this time of the day in the sun. But I have to do this today, y'all. Okay. This is the one thing I stressed to y'all 
all my previous videos. And this is where y'all are going to think I'm crazy and say, well, that's not what she said. Okay. I stressed to y'all, keep the suckers pinched off. Yes, you heard that right. I did stress that. I did tell y'all to keep the suckers pinched off. Yes, I did. The second half of the growing season, I don't pinch the suckers off. Yes, you heard me correctly. Okay, here's a sucker right here. Let me show you why. Here's a sucker. You see this plant down here at the bottom? It's fixing to give me all these tomatoes right here. You see how scraggly this plant's looking? If I leave it like this, I'm not going to get a second picking. However, look up here. I'm already getting some new blooms. This is fixing to turn into a tomato. Closer towards the top of the plant, I've got new blooms, new growth. Let me find some new growth. Uh, suckers are new growth, but I've seen some new growth. Uh, okay, here's an example. This is not a sucker because it's not in the 45 degree angle of this right here. Here's a new branch. Here's a new branch. Here's a new branch. That's not a sucker right there. That's a new branch. And look, new foliage. In my second half of my tomato plants, I can do this in my region. <clears throat> oh, thank you, Jesus, for the cloud. I'm drenched. The second half of my tomato season, I can prune all the old dead stuff off. Leave the suckers. When I prune all the dead stuff off, I'm going to need new growth for the second go around. That's the reason why I leave the suckers on mine only in the second half of my growing. In other words, I'm taking a chance and I'm gonna try to get a second harvesting off these tomatoes all the way up to the first frost. I don't keep the suckers on there in the first half because I need those first fruits. Am I making any sense? I need all that energy going to the first fruits, okay? And you're not pruning them that much because they're not dying out like that as much. So you want to keep the suckers at bay your first part of your growing season. It only makes sense when your plants start, not start, uh, some things start dying out like this, you cut these dead ones off. See these dead ones? Dead. Now, let me show you something. Look right there. In amongst that dead one right there, look at that little sucker. I'm going to need that because I need to replace all of these dead branches I just cut off. So, the second half of my growing season, the second half of my growing season, I need the suckers. I didn't need them in the first half. I needed to get the plant maintained, under control, and growing those first fruits. The second half of the growing season, I need them because I've harvested the first fruits. Some branches have put all their energy into producing those first fruits. I need to get them off, and I need those suckers for the second half to give me some more for possibly a second harvesting, a second picking. So I didn't want y'all to think that I was contradicting myself or I was like, didn't know what I was talking about. This is only if you have a longer growing season like we do. And you're not getting, your first frost doesn't come until like ours, November. Okay? Y'all, sometimes we've made it all the way to Thanksgiving with no frost. I'm not kidding you. One year I think we were lucky and we got a frost in October but that's a couple of years ago. So, try this. I'm gonna show you what I'm gonna do and I'm gonna show you how some of my plants look. I found, let's see, let me find, what I, and I told myself yesterday, remember where this plant is, because I wanna show them. Okay, maybe this one right here. Okay, I trimmed off a lot of dead on this one yesterday. Started from the bottom, went all the way up, okay? Now, I got green foliage. I've got new blooms coming in. These are going to be tomatoes, y'all. Now, in the second half, I need these suckers, y'all. I need some more greenery 
on my plant. I need these suckers. Here's a beautiful sucker right here. I need these, y'all. If it doesn't work with you keeping your suckers on your plants to give you a second grow a second time around and you're fixing to have your first frost, you can try this. Purposely leave a few suckers on. See how long they will get. See how big they'll get. Take this sucker off. Put it in a potted plant or a bucket or something like that. Y'all, the hairs on these tomato plants are roots. You can take these suckers and put them in some more containers, and you can grow them inside, y'all, and have them protected, okay? Try that. You'll have a couple of tomato plants inside during the winter and still do your same process trying to grow them. So many hours a day, give them some sunlight, consistently water them, take care of them, y'all, and you might have another growing season. Um, here's some. I pruned this one yesterday, y'all. Look how scraggly it's looking. But look. I got some new growth down here. I'm starting to get some new growth up here. I need this for the second half of my season. Cause see, I've got some new blooms. So this is the reason why I wanted to do a second video is to show y'all some people, Lord, please let that cloud stay out for a while. Some people are gonna be able to do this. Some people are not. Experiment, okay? I'm experimenting. I'm going to see if I can get a second go around. And I think I can because, look, I've already got blooms, so it's already working for me. I'll still be getting tomatoes probably like up until October. They might start fizzling out in October. Might make it to November. I don't know. Y'all, one year I remember I was picking tomatoes all the way through November. Um, and then it finally frosted. And it, that it just killed the rest of the plant but I was able to get that many tomatoes. I had an excellent year that year with tomatoes. Y'all, I'm not kidding, I did. So I'm gonna try this today. I'm gonna go back through some of these because I missed some spots yesterday. Y'all, I got too hot yesterday and too, I started getting sick at my stomach. My ears started ringing. I was like, mm, y'all, I couldn't hardly walk. I said, it's time to go inside. My husband's like, when are you gonna learn to quit while you're ahead? and quit pushing yourself because he knows I want to get to that perfect stopping point, y'all. And I just couldn't find that stopping point yesterday till it was too late. So I'm going to go back through my plant and I'm going to get off some more stuff that I missed yesterday. I must have just been too tired. Then I'm going to start on this row right here. Y'all, this is going to make about the fifth, fifth time. The, see, I got to tie up again. Some of them's just falling. This is going to make about the fifth time I've had to tie up my tomatoes, y'all. See how tall them are right there? Y'all, that's over my head by the time I get down there. So this is how you can possibly, I'm not saying everybody can do this. This is possibly a way that you can extend the life of your tomatoes and get a second harvest. See, I've got this side to go. My Romas, y'all, I don't know what's going on with my Romas. They just did not do good. Some did, some didn't. Some of these little ones right here, I just don't know what happened to them. They put off, they got some fruit, but then they started fizzling out really quick. I'm going to doctor on them and see what I can do. Some down there look better. <clears throat> I'll finish the garden tour. This is our sweet potatoes. They're going to be ready come fall. I got to get out here and get my vines crisscrossed back because I don't like them going to visit the other side. I know y'all got relatives over there, but I don't want you crisscrossing. We've already harvested um, our first two rows of corn. We've got a few ears left on the second row where we feel like, hmm, maybe they need just a little bit more growing time. I see a couple in there. We pick them as we think they're ready, and some of them need just a little bit more. It's like, uh, and like, look at this one. Like, this one right here is going to be ready to harvest quicker than this one. See, this one still has green silks. This one still has, this one's just about ready. Okay, we're going to check these come Monday. It'll be their, their two, their German, their growing season. I think this corn was 72 days. So that's going to be, that's their season. So it's fixed to be time to check these. 72 days will be Monday. So we will check these next two rows right here. This one and this row Monday. Look, some of these are going to be ready before these. This one's going to be ready before this one. 
So we'll continue to check our garden every day. Everything's not going to come in all at one time, y'all. Then these last three rows, we got to get some water to these because our sprinkler only got about the first three rows last night. So we're going to put the sprinkler on this end of the garden this evening and finish getting my sunflowers. Y'all look at my beautiful sunflowers coming up. Y'all, them's way over my head. Them's about uh, eight feet tall. They're about eight feet tall, yes. Uh, we're going to put the sprinkler system out here, and we're going to get my mammoth sunflowers and the rest of my corn right here because I still have three rows that still need some water. They still need to grow because they're, they were planted later. So they're in their prime right now. We need to get some water to them. I've already fertilized. We need to get some water to them. So that's our garden, y'all. And I, I wanted to put out this second half of the video, Growing Tomatoes, for those that can do this. You know, depending on your region and for those that just want to give it a try, if you want to try to do this with your tomatoes, I gave you two options. If you can leave your plant outside and get a second harvesting off of it, now leave your sucker zone because you need new growth. It just makes common sense, y'all. You need to replace what we cut off during the first time around. Or take your suckers and if they're a good size, pinch them all, take them inside, plant them in something. See if you can grow a couple of tomato plants inside. Yeah, my husband got me something really neat for my birthday. I'm going to squeeze this in here real quick. I'm not inside, but um, I'm going to put it on my blog. I'm going to do a process. My husband bought me something for my birthday last week. Uh, it's called an arrow garden. I've always wanted one, but they're kind of expensive. And he knows how much I love to grow herbs. But I do not have luck with herbs when I try to grow them in pots inside. I think it's because I don't have the light. I don't have any, I don't have all that. So he bought me an arrow garden. And I love it. I'm seeing little sprouts on it already. And there's some seed pods where I'm going to do an experiment there in the winter, y'all. There's some seed pods that you can put your own seeds in it. So guess what I'm going to do during the winter? <laughs> I'm going to see if I can grow some tomatoes inside in my arrow garden first. Let them get up big enough. Then I'm going to try to transfer them to a bucket. And let's see what we can do during the winter time. <laughs> I'm excited, y'all. It may work. It may not. But my husband knows I love to play around. I love to experiment. I love to play with plants. I, I love growing things. I love... But y'all... I can't do house plants. I, I just don't understand that. I have a green thumb. Is it a green thumb or a brown thumb? I don't know what you call it. I can't do house plants. They'll die. I don't know why. But I can do a vegetable garden. My mama can do the house plants, but they have trouble with the vegetable garden due to their soil where they live mostly that red clay soil and she can do the house plants she can do any kind of house plant she can grow them all day long all year long she can grow them. so we kind of share things so this is my garden tour this is the second half of my growing tomato series i'm going to experiment and you can try to experiment i know this works for me and you can try it, see if it works for you. Play around with your stuff. Now look what squashes will do to your arm. Look at the scratches on my arm. Yeah, looks horrible. That's what squashes and kidney plants will do to you. They're prickly like okra. They'll do it to your legs too. Anyway, I hope y'all have enjoyed this series on growing tomatoes. And I hope you'll get out there and you'll try and just play with, sweat y'all, and experiment. I gotta get busy before I just get too hot out here. And I ain't even got my work done yet. Uh, probably the next video I'm gonna do for y'all is how I process my tomatoes. Now, I can make this an all day thing or I can divide it up into phases. And that's my energy level here lately. That's what I've been having to do is do phases. And I mostly do it this way. But my next video will be how I process my tomatoes. And I've got, I've got to do some picking today when I get done working. And I'm going to be processing some things tonight. If I don't get the video made tonight when I'm doing them, ugh, I'll save some and do them another day and, you know, go from there. But y'all have fun in your garden. Experiment. Play around with. Don't get upset if something doesn't work because y'all, it's trial and error. And it's, it's Mother Nature, okay? It's trial and error. 
Just like these peppers, one variety is working better for us than another one is. So don't get upset, y'all. Keep playing, keep experimenting, but most of all, you gotta keep working. You cannot just throw seeds out in your garden and expect everything to grow, okay? You have to maintain, even in the heat of the summer, y'all, you got to baby your garden and take care of it or you're not gonna have anything. You have to keep it fertilized. You have to keep it the weeds out. You have to keep your plants protected. You have to keep it watered. Y'all, you just you can't just let it go just because you're hot, okay? Get out early in the morning before the temperatures start rising. Get out in the evening and work in the garden after supper. That's a good time to get outside is after supper and work all of what you just ate off. <laughs> and then you can come in, take a shower, and go to bed. Just fall out in the bed, y'all. So I hope you've enjoyed this series. Um, I'll probably do another garden tour closer to the end of the season and let you know how our garden's doing. I'll, I'll keep you updated and keep you posted at how my tomato plants are doing. But so far, so good. I think I'm going to get a second picking because, I mean, you know, oh, let's see. This one right here, I think I saw something on this one yesterday. Yes, just when I think this one's dying out. Look right here. A little bit of new growth right there. Just when I think it's dying out. This one's got some new growth all up here at the top because I got new blooms, y'all. I'm gonna finish cutting all this dead stuff off. There's some new growth right there, new growth up here. I'm just gonna experiment and play, y'all. This is what helps me extend my tomato season. So, like I said, I hope y'all have enjoyed this tour. I see a zucchini right through there. I gotta pick. I see some squash. I gotta pick. Y'all, we've been picking squash and zucchini every single day. I told you these things multiply overnight. I can't wait till her watermelon gets grown. We're going to invite them over. We're going to eat their watermelon and let them see. My granddaughters are so excited eating things that comes out of the garden. They're like, I'm like, y'all grew this. They're like, oh. you know, they're excited. They love it. I got them out here one day and let them see their tomatoes. And they were just so excited. Of course, they thought like they were little balls and they wanted to throw them. I'm like, no, we have to be gentle with the tomatoes, please. So they're excited about seeing the things that they grew, and they're just happy about it, okay? So I'm going to get busy out here because I really need to beat this heat. I think I've got some good cloud cover coming, and thank you, Jesus, I need it because I'm already getting hot. I want to get me some tea over there. But play, experiment, have fun take care of. That's all I can stress about having a garden. It's not for the weak, y'all. You're going to get out here and you're going to sweat your tail off, okay? But don't let your hard work go to waste. Don't let your your finances go to waste that you put into putting this garden in. If you don't, y'all, you've just wasted your time and your money. I don't get out here and sweat like a dog and, and, and uh, or a pig, whichever one sweats the most. What's that say? Sweat like a pig uh, for it to go to waste. I just can't do that, y'all. So... We're going to see what we can do with these tomatoes. I hope y'all have enjoyed this. I hope you didn't think I was crazy and say, well, that's not what she said the first time. That was a reason why I didn't say it the first time. Um, but y'all have fun. See what you can do with your tomatoes. So I hope everybody has a good day. I got to go get something to drink. I got to wipe some sweat, and then I got to get busy. <laughs> y'all have a good day, and stay cool, please, in the heat of this summer. It's just going to be climbing from here. Y'all have a good day, and God bless.